Respected colleagues, the following audio slide presentation accompanying our publication will give you a deeper insight into the basic physics of the transcrestal hydrodynamic ultrasonic cavitational sinus lift, commonly called intralift technique with the ultrasonic surgical device piezotome. Intralift sinus lift surgery starts with a small crestal mucoperiostal flap as can be seen in the upper left picture, followed by a marking of the osteotomy site with a conventional implant drill. A pilot osteotomy then is performed with a conically diamond-coated piezotome tip, as depicted in the left lower graphic. The sinus floor then is opened with a snub diamond-coated ultrasonic tip, which is known to be highly safe on soft tissues, preventing an iatrogenic perforation of the Schneiderian membrane, as can be seen in the right lower graphic. After opening the subantral bony sinus floor with the third flat diamond-coated piezotone tip, a shallow receptacle is prepared for the final cavitational ultrasonic tip, enabling the hydrodynamic detachment of the sinus membrane. In the final surgical step, the hydrodynamic sinus membrane detachment tip is inserted tightly and sealed into the receptacle prepared before. The piezotome now is activated and the Schneiderian membrane detached cleanly and undisrupted from the entire antrum floor by uniform hydrodynamic pressure enhanced by ultrasonic pressure peaks generated by the cavitation effect. After detachment of the Schneiderian membrane, the transcrestal osteotomy is widened and bone graft applied subantrally. Optionally, implants can be inserted simultaneously before wound closure. This slide shows the clinical situation when the Schneiderian membrane is detached with the intralift technique. When the detachment tip is removed, the backflow of saline solution and blood proves the sinus membrane to be fully intact without perforation. Additionally, the sinus membrane can be checked for perforations macroscopically by direct visual inspection and by a Valsalva test. Nevertheless, the overall success of subantral bone regeneration is based on the full integrity of the Schneiderian membrane on histological level. Since it is well known that the basal tissue layer of the Schneiderian membrane is periosteum and by this contains osteoprogenitor cells, this tissue layer is the main carrier of subantral centripetal bone regeneration. Periosteum itself is divided into a fibrous layer and an osteogenic layer that is attached to the bone with sharpy fibers. The same histological structures are applicable to the Schneiderian membrane as we were able to prove in our study. The periosteum of the Schneiderian membrane is subdivided into a fibrous layer and an osteogenic layer that is attached to the antrum floor by Sharpe fibers. Various studies recently published indicate that current sinus lift techniques might lead to an iatrogenic dissection of the sinus membrane, which means that the osteogenic layer of the Schneiderian membrane is left attached to the bone and by this is preventing successful subantral bone regeneration. As we were able to prove now in our human cadaver head study, none of the investigated 150 histological specimens showed any sign of dissection of the sinus membrane when detached with the intralift technique. In all 150 investigated specimens, the osteogenic layer was cleanly detached from the antrum floor with a fully intact cell layer of osteoblasts and without any lesion of the integrity of the sinus membrane as the functional unit of bone regeneration. By this histologically verified proof, the intralift method seems to provide the best prerequisites for undisturbed subantral bone regeneration when compared to traditional sinus lift techniques.